the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Today's Mass is for the intentions for the day. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, exaltation of the lowly, who raised St. Francis of Paola to the glory of your saints, grant, we pray, that by his merits and example we may happily attain the rewards promised to the humble through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abraham prostrated himself, God spoke to him. My covenant with you is this. You are to become the father of a host of nations. No longer shall you be called Abram. Your name shall be called Abraham. For I am making you the father of a host of nations. I will render you exceedingly fertile. I will make nations of you. Kings shall stem from you. I will maintain my covenant with you and your descendants after you. Throughout the ages as an everlasting pact to be your God and the God of your descendants after you. I will give to you and to your descendants after you the land in which you are now staying, the whole land of Canaan as a permanent possession, and I will be their God. God also said to Abraham, on your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Look to the Lord in his strength, seek to serve him constantly. Recall the wondrous deeds that he has wrought, his portents and the judgments he has uttered. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Your descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God throughout the earth. His judgments prevail. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jews, Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. So the Jews said to him, Now we are sure that you are possessed. Abraham died as did the prophets, yet you say, Whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died, or the prophets who died? Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is worth noting. Nothing. But it's my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God. You do not know him, but I know him. And if I should say that I do not know him, I would be like you, a liar. But I do know him, and I keep his word. Abraham, your father, rejoiced to see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, 
and you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, before Abraham came to be, I am. So they picked up stones and threw out him, but Jesus hid and went out of the temple area. The gospel of the Lord. I don't know if you can imagine in your life the times that maybe you have made promises to people, promises that you maybe intended to keep, but in one way or another, you fell short, you forgot, and that promise never happened. Or maybe you're that person who someone promised something to you and it never happened and it hurts you tremendously. And maybe some of you that are watching here today have had that broken promise and your relationship with that person has been severed or broken. You see, when when I think about our life with God, most often I think we we think about our own life and, and promises. And oftentimes we think about how we deal with promises to to God's promise for us. But it's very different. Because our God is, our God is not us. Our God is not broken. Our God doesn't have any flaws. You see, in the first reading, when God promises a covenant with Abraham, you see, I, I, I read, I enjoy reading, and, and I remember learning a lot from, from Dr. Scott Hahn. And he said that when God makes a covenant, it's not a contract. It's not just a wishful thought. A covenant is an exchange of persons. This is why in the Old Testament, when a covenant is made, blood is spilled. Because it says that if I break this covenant, then then may I be dead. Covenant is an exchange of persons. When God promises a covenant with Abraham, God intends to have that promise forever that it will not be broken. Countless times when you read this first reading, you just you see that God is saying, I will keep my promise for you. You will be a great nation. You see, that promise extends to us now. How many times in our life where we maybe have fell short and God still loves us, God still is here for us, You see, in ancient times, Israel, just imagine, Abraham was our first father, right? We have Moses, we have the other prophets. But each time, when God made this covenant with his people, each time the people turned away, they broke that promise. But God was so faithful that he kept staying coarse. He never abandoned his people. He kept saying yes to his people. Now, in the most perfect way, we have our Lord Jesus, who is the promise, the ultimate promise of that covenant, because it is Jesus Christ who gives us life. And I want to read to you something that God says to Abraham in the first reading. He says, on your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. You see, God wants us to be faithful to his covenant because he loves us. Because God alone is life. And when we are faithful to that promise, God will give us everything. Know that, yes, there are moments in our life when we fall short, when we're not perfect. But this is why we have a God that is perfect. That God is is the one that will make up our shortcomings. You see, today we celebrate a saint, St. Francis of Paolo, He's not St. Francis of Assisi, but he definitely was a follower. and He was very close to St. Francis. His parents, in fact, prayed to St. Francis for help. But this St. Francis of Paolo, what I want to highlight is he became a hermit. And he started an order of, of religious hermits. And in his hermitage, it, it, he had a name. and he, he wanted to be called the Little Ones because he wanted to be little in the sight of God. He was all about humility and giving himself in service of others. 
And oftentimes when he did things that were difficult out of love, he, say, he would say the words out of love, out of love, out of love. Any time he had to labor, any time he had to travel, he would do it out of love. You see, for us, we keep our promises to God and our covenant with God because we do it out of love. Because we have a God who went there first out of love. You see, this is our great, the great thing about God. God tells us to love him, but he first loved us. God tells us to give everything to him, but he first gives everything to us. We have a God who understands our human nature. He knows our condition. He knows how hard it is for us to follow him. And yet he goes first and he asks us to ask him for the strength to do it all out of love. Trusting in God's providence as did Abraham, our father in faith, we offer our prayers to the Lord. That Christ may continue to strengthen the faith of church leaders in their work of witnessing to the gospel this Lent. Let us pray to the Lord. That all who are elected to lead nations and peoples may be guided by the just hand of God in all their decision making. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Holy Spirit may give comfort to those who struggle with chronic illness or pain especially for all those who are suffering with the coronavirus, that God may grant their mercy and consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. That our Lenten practices may be inspired by Jesus' own prayer and fasting. Let us pray to the Lord. We lift up all our healthcare workers, all those in the front lines, that they may have hope and faith and courage to continue to fight this virus. Let us pray to the Lord for all the intentions in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. That God may bless our faithful departed and grant them eternal rest with him. Let us pray to the Lord. God, God of covenants, old and new, hear our prayer and grant all we need, we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For to the earth and work of human hands become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. We the divine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May these offerings of our service place on your altar in commemoration of blessed, blessed Francis of Paolo. Be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray. A grant that release from earthly attachments we may have our riches in you alone. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
And through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed, the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks. He broke and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church breath throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with France, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, Timothy and Tom, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Francis of Paolo, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we are married to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you, your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. <clears throat> the Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. At this moment, let us pray the spiritual communion prayer. We pray, Almighty God, that we who are fortified by the power of this sacrament may learn through the example of St. Francis of Paolo to seek you always above all things and to bear in this world the likeness of the new man through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the Father, Son, and Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.